Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from Homesite, and today we're going to be doing part four of creating a graphical 3D Lovelace interface. Let's go! So if you've been following along with my Lovelace part one, two and three, we've created all of our graphics, including some icons, including some overlays and including the 3D background itself. And we've started to create an interface that looks a bit like this. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to add in some cameras, we're going to add in some more icons and a few, I'm going to do a little graphic with the TV as well. And that's probably going to be the end of it, unless there's anything in particular you want to see. So hopefully you will like this video down at the bottom. Hopefully you've already subscribed or you will subscribe after watching so you don't miss out on any great videos that are coming up. As always, you will find all of the code that I use in this video in the description down below. So let's get started. So for those of you who follow along before, this should be fairly familiar to you. If it's not, you can get all of the graphics and all of the code for this in the description below, as I've already mentioned. Now we should, in our notepad++ window, um, now this is the way that I like to do it, um, store all of my config in Notepad++, which will leave all of my comments in. Um, now, I did have a few comments on one of the previous videos about uh, using Visual Studio Code um, instead of Notepad++ and pasting it in. Now, I had a play with that, and in all honesty, um, when trying to edit the YAML um, directly, um, in fact, it's not even YAML, it encoded it in JSON um, in the background, so um, there probably is a way, and I, and I think I was reading, that you can find a, a way of, of forcing it into YAML and editing the code directly, but in all honesty, once you're sort of in the rhythm of it, I don't find it too bad, so I'm going to stick with um, keeping everything in Notepad++ and stored on my local machine or onto your Pi or device, whatever it is, um, and pasting it in, because all of these comments um, for those of you who haven't watched the previous videos, um, all of these comments disappear as soon as you paste it and press save. So this is my 3D interface. Um, and as a bit of a reminder, we've got our um, home, we've got our occupancy icons at the top. You can see mine's nicely lit up, shows I'm at home. We can toggle between floors, which changes the background image without changing tabs. Um, and we've got some buttons here where we can turn lights on and off. And if we press and hold, then we can pop up and it will show you the history. Um, and the same with icons over here, more info, will show more history um, and where I am in the world. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a camera down here at the bottom left. So this is fairly simple and like I said I am going to put this into my um, notepad++ file first. Now I'm going to put this so we can see this structure of this notepad file um, has the left panel um, with row 1 being people. Um, row 2 being floors, that's this bit here. Row 3 is empty, but that I've got normally I've got states of things, i.e. My, is my heating on, is the alarm state set, and some cameras down at the bottom. Now this obviously assumes that you've got some cameras set up already. Assuming that you have, nice and simply, and that they support live streaming of course as well, um, and not just sort of snapshots and JPEGs. So I've got type of image in here, the entity is camera.cam3, which is the camera I'm going to stick at the bottom. The uh, camera image is the same as well, so that's the entity ID. Camera view, live, and then some styling there. So I'm going to copy all of that now, and I'm going to edit it, put it into my config file. There we go, and we can see it's popped up down at the bottom. And I'm going to make it, actually, I want to make it full width. Of that left hand bar so let's try this for like I said these can be a bit fiddly but just by sort of fiddling around with it you can normally find it works fairly well 16 yeah I think it looks about right so I'm just going to update that into here so that's 16 and 28 and if I press save on that yeah it looks quite good and the other thing I'm going to do in here is put a border radius on and I'm going to make that 10% copy all of that 
put it in here and let's put some nice rounded corners on because everything else is nicely rounded we've got this nice curve on this left hand panel everything else is a circle so there we go that's nicely rounded as well there we go so we can obviously make smaller versions of that and have multiple if you wanted now by default you don't have to do anything if you click on it you can expand it and you can see where we store all of our coats and shoes in our house in our little boot room now if you press and hold you get exactly the same thing um, now i always have the preload stream ticked um, which works out pretty well so the next bit we'll do is we're going to put a tv overlay on a nice little graphic to show the tv is on now if you remember from previously we created some graphics now if i double click on that one there now this is pulling from my directly from my home assistant interface in that config file it looks like this is a, a static image but if we browse to it we can see that actually it's an animated png even though it's just got a normal png file extension so and we know that home assistant can support those animated pngs as well so that's the next thing that we're going to do now these are fairly generic so you can see that if we were to put that on at 100 percent that's going to be much bigger than that tv there so the first thing we'll do is here is our notepad plus plus config we're going to find the section that we want to put it in remember everything's got to be in the right layer um, so this is over the top of other stuff but underneath some other things so we, in this case we've got the floor we've got the lighting overlays first and i want to put the ground floor graphic overlays i.e this tv over the top of that lighting overlay but underneath any icon buttons because we could, could put a button on there to be able to do um, to turn your tv on you might have it on a relay you might have um, if it supports network if it's got a direct network connection it, you could have way called lan for it or all sorts of other things but in this instance this is just going to be a, an input boolean telling us whether it's on or off i'm going to start off by copying one of my lighting overlays from up here make sure i get that tabbed correctly which looks like that now my input boolean is called demo underscore tv i'm going to call this living room tv i'm going to get rid of the opacity because i don't want that i'm going to keep this one by one transparent png and it's a single pixel um, so that when the state is off or when it's not on actually it will not show anything now i've got a tap action here of none and a hold action of none as well because again i don't want it to do anything at the moment if i click on it so my state image is there now i know i need to change that i can take my local from there now styles 50 top 45 width 22 and we'll see what that does so i'm going to copy all of that don't need that anymore and paste it in here now it's uh off at the moment so that's why it's not appearing so if i turn that on on my other screen there we go you can see that apng is appearing here now it's obviously way too big and we can shift that around a bit cool so that looks pretty good so if i turn my tv off it goes away altogether and back on you can see that light's light glowing pretty cool now what if we wanted that to be used on this this monitor in here um, as well in the office we can also do that now I'm going to cheat, I'm just going to keep the same entity ID because I haven't got an entity ID set up for the office monitor. Now I'm going to call this office monitor. Or it could be office PC or whatever. Now I'm going to use the same overlay, but you can see that it's not going to work straight away because it's a different angle. So I'm just going to guess left. It's going to be 50. 
and top 10. And we'll paste that in. Uh, you can see that's up here on the car. Sometimes it is a case of spot the uh, spot the entity. So I'm going to move that down. Now, this is the bit I wanted to show you. We can see that at the moment it's still the same orientation as that one, but we can put a rotate on it. So you don't have to create individual graphics for all of your different TVs or all of your monitors or anything like that. So we can do that with this bit here which we enter into style, transform, rotate. Now that's rotated 90 degrees. We want more like 17, it's not a bad guess. Now that you've, now I've pressed save and it's on the big screen, you can see it needs to come around a fair bit more, but you guys can have a play with that anyway. So I've got a couple of different overlays there. Um, that I've made available, so feel free to use them as you wish. So the next bit I'm going to do is I'm going to put some icons underneath my the floor section here in that left-hand panel. So I'm going to open up my Notepad++ and find the right section, which is down here somewhere, end left panel. So there's my people. Here's my start of left panel row two, which is the, for the floors. And this one here is going to be for my states, as I'm calling it. So I'm just going to paste in all of my pre-prepared config so you can see where it goes. And again, if you want it, you can pick it up from the description below. So here we go, paste that in. Now, and now I'm going to copy all of that and paste it into the dashboard. I'm going to save and we'll take a look. Now while most of the entities I'm using on this are input booleans that I've just set up just for demonstration purposes so I'm not having to turn real lights on and off in my house, these are actually genuine entities that I use. So there's a toggle of the automation so all of my, a lot of my node red states point to, to this entity here so that I can toggle it off and on in case I wanted to turn all the automations off for whatever reason. This is my alarm on and off which is normally controlled by Node Red dashboard, which I'll do in another video. This is whether the house is occupied or not. So you can see that it is anyway, because I've got my little face lit, lit up there. If I was away, which I'm just going to set manually. You can see that that light has now gone off. But if I had house guests, for example, i.e. we might all be out, but I might have house guests, and that allows you to toggle house guests on and off, and there's no other way in the system, other than manually or anything like that, to, to turn that on and off. So this is where I would set that, so if we're away for a weekend and someone's house sitting, which is quite normal, come and look after the cat, um, we would then turn that on, and that would then keep the automations and stop the alarms and that sort of thing. Now, you can see that that has gone blue, so I can turn that off and that off, but because this is in my presence detection, it's saying if house guests is on, therefore there must be someone in the house. Um, and the very last one here is my heating, um, which is just a, a simple toggle off and on as well. So, the, and the last thing that I'm going to do in this video is put all of the other entities that I've already prepared. I'm not going to go through the pain. You've already seen examples on how to set them, how to position them, how to set them all up. Um, and so I'm just going to paste all of those in as well. I'm going to copy all of this and paste it into the dashboard. Here we go. And save. So we've now got some outside lights, we've got some outside lights on the back of the house, and we've got all of these other lights as well, which looks pretty cool, I think. So, and we've got a door state there as well. Now you could obviously have multiple door states as well. So the very last thing I'm going to say is just a reminder to say you don't need to have these input booleans set up. You don't have to have input booleans for specific lights and that sort of thing. You would normally use your entities and look at the, the changing state of those. But And I hope that this has given you hopefully some ideas. Obviously this is very unlikely to be a representation of your house, um, but hopefully it's given you some ideas on how to use them and how to, how to create one of your very own. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this little mini series on how to create a 3D Lovelace interface. I hope that from these videos you've got the knowledge and the ability and the confidence to have a go. I've given you some tools as well on how to use them. I've given you some of the graphics to hopefully make life a little bit easier for you. Now I will apologise, it's going to take you hours. Now if you enjoy that sort of thing that's great um, and I know I do and I will spend hours and I will redevelop it and redevelop it and redevelop it over and over again just for fun because I'm that kind of guy. So hopefully you have liked this video, hopefully you've already subscribed to my channel and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.